Hi, this is Sarit Schwetzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your Creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your Source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 105 for the fourth of Adar Base in a leap year. And today's episode, we are beginning chapter 35, and it's going to be kind of an interesting one in the sense that we're going to be left hanging. <laughs> I'll tell you that from the start. There's not really going to be a resolution in this chapter. It's more like bringing up questions and existential quandaries and then the ultra is going to just kind of leave us there till next time he will leave, leave us with a little bit of solace in the sense that he'll see the answer is coming and a little bit of a cliffhanger as we'll see and the what came to mind for me in reading this chapter and thinking about how to give it over is a saying that I once believed that I read from Rav Yitzchak Ginsburg in Israel. If anybody wants to look this up or correct me, please do. Uh, maybe it comes from other sources as well. But it was basically this idea that in order to really truly understand chassidus, a person needs to be disturbed about reality. So... You often see this with like Balei Tshuva, people that come back to Judaism or something like that. Uh, people can kind of see this in a negative way, like, oh, maybe people are searching for religion because they're broken, because they need something in their life and they're not really together kind of people. That could be like a negative way of, of looking at it. But in a more positive way, if we want to focus more on the good side of it, is the fact that if a person's life is too comfortable, if, if a person doesn't really have a lot of troubles in their lives or any kind of really serious troubles, like if they have it too good, they're not necessarily going to be the deepest people. So you often find people who have experienced trauma, abuse, all kinds of different things, or just life, really diff difficulties in life of any form are often, often going to be the type of people that are really very deep and really are often much more interesting to talk to and have deeper understandings about reality and receptivity to philosophical discussions and stuff like that. So today's chapter is really going to be preparing us to be in that mindset. So while for some people that might come more naturally, like if people have experienced hardships in life, it kind of lends itself to start thinking about why am I here or what is the purpose of my life. And we often find in different civilizations, sometimes the poorer civilizations, the third world countries, things like that tend to be a lot more spiritual because it's like when your physical reality isn't really treating you so well, it's it's normal to kind of turn to spiritual reality versus if you get distracted with physical reality in the sense that you have all the cars and the houses and all that stuff, you're not necessarily, and, and you know, let's say you have good family life and relationships and everything like that too. Like, why would you search? Why would you find anything else? So today's portion is really going to bring us into that existential crisis and explain to us what existential crisis we should all be grappling with, even if, thank God, hopefully some of us have had pretty good lives, hopefully. Uh, so even if a person has had this kind of good upbringing or whatever it is, or, or if they haven't really for anybody, then the ultra is going to kind of give us guidance as to what the existential crisis should be. What What is the basic question that we should all be grappling with reality? And that basic question is, why are we here? Obviously, the famous, most famous question of all times. And we can especially appreciate this question in light of everything we've learned so far about the character of the Benoni, who this book is written for. And 
this whole idea that we've talked about how life is struggle, how we never really win the battle. And we talked a little bit about the idea that it's really more about the process and it's about it's about the struggle and all of that. But the ultra epist seems to be saying in this chapter that we're going to be learning that that's really not enough. And really, ultimately, it's like we really should be asking what is the point? Why? Why do we have the struggle? Why couldn't God just make things easy? And so with that said, let's get straight into the text and see how the Altar Rebbe breaks it down. And here we go. So for chapter 35, so the Altar Rebbe brings up a pasuk, a verse, which he sort of set as his mission statement for this entire book, which is a verse from Devarim, chapter 30, verse 14, which was that this thing meaning this service of God, serving God, getting close to God, is very near to you in your mouth and in your heart to do it. So now here, the altar Rebbe wants to really focus on this word, to do it. And so he says, to continue explaining this idea, this wording of to do it, to, to serve God in actuality, and also to understand a little bit, like a, a small glimmer of the purpose of the Benoni and why their souls came down here into this world to become enclosed in the animal soul, which comes from the klipa, as we described, those husks, and the sitra acha on the other side. Even though we know, and as we've learned, they will never be able to eradicate it their entire lives and to push it out of its place in the left ventricle of the heart. So for a bainani, as we as we mentioned, it's constant struggle. Abenoni, once again, to recall, to, to bring to mind what Abenoni is, this is a person who never, ever, ever goes against the will of God in thought, speech, or action. This is somebody who, in colloquial sense, people often call it sadiq, but the Abenoni isn't so lax with that term, and he says this is merely Abenoni, and the reason why they are Abenoni and not a sadiq is because there's a constant fight. They may be behaving properly, but the the evil within them the evil inclination is still there very much present very much alive in the left ventricle of the heart and it's a constant fight to push it down so that all kinds of different thoughts and meanderings will not rise up into the mind so even in the mind so being is the type of person who has to have control over their thoughts so the second that like an impulse to think a certain thing that's not the most positive thing comes up the being has to squash it down and push it down and the ultra reminds us that this is because the essence and the being of the animal soul that comes from the clipos is in such a strong way it's 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 still totally intense and in its full strength just like as if just as if they were born so the banani fights throughout their life and is engaged in this perpetual battle but even after all this time of battling their negative impl- inclinations are ger- they're just as strong as before so it's like what really has the banani accomplished through this fight is basically what the elder is getting at and he says that it's just that they are not vested within their body, as we explained above. So it's like the the negative impulses are there. It's just that the Alter Rebbe doesn't allow them to become vested within his body. And so thus, here's the question that the Alter Rebbe says. Why did their soul come down into this world in order to strive for nothing, God forbid? It seems like really nihilistic. Like it seems like it's all for naught. Like we're just they're just fighting and fighting and fighting all of their days with this negative impl- inclination and that they're never able to vanquish it. So again, it sounds like that Sisyphus example that we gave of the the Greek king who's pushing that boulder up up uh, a mountain and it's like it's never going to get there. So like what's the point? What is the point of it all? And then the Ultra Rebbe says that this should be their comfort. So here he gives a little bit of an answer, which he's going to get into more next time, which is that their comfort should be in a doubled measure to assist and to gladden their heart over God that who dwells with them in their Torah and in their service. So basically the altar is saying that what we're going to be exploring in the next few sessions is we're going to be talking about this idea of how there is a rejoicing that a person can have in spite of this seeming existential angst and like kind of nihilistic view of life and in recognizing that God is with us within our Torah and our service. So this might sound super ex- abstract and it's meant to be very abstract and the ultra up is going to make it a lot more concrete next time. So again, it's like just to bring it back and kind of like give the re- recap is what the ultra about I believe is doing here is he wants us to really grapple with the question. He doesn't, he, he's not getting to the answer just yet. 
because he wants us to really sit with the question and really be disturbed by this question. Why are we here? What's the point if we just keep struggling and struggling and struggling and we don't ever get there? We don't ever get to the point of totally transforming ourselves in a true way. What is the point of our lives? So stay tuned for next time and we will get there and I will speak to you then. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Avraham Yitzhak ben Binyamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Top project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.